there's something so excruciating and infuriating, but somehow in the weirdest of ways, satisfying. <laughs> it hurts so good uh, about watching J.D. Vance say something and he and he's so cornered knowing that not a single person believes him at least a single rational person knowing that he's giving up every bit of his backbone to say this because he knows he has to otherwise quote unquote daddy don as the crowd chanted at trump the other day would be angry at him and that's what you're going to see multiple times throughout this interview Tons of credit to Jake Tapper because he did a really great interview here. And here he sets up the question to, to Vance. Are you saying, because this was Vance's argument, that all of these people who worked in Trump's administration, former secretaries of state, former national security advisor, chief of staff, chairman of the joint chiefs of staff, all these people you're asserting are speaking out against Trump saying he's dangerous and fascistic? Because they don't want world peace, <laughs> which is which is what Vance said. It, it's because they don't want Trump to succeed at world peace. That's a crazy thing to say about a bunch of, in many of the cases, former veterans who served this country in a way that few people do, like Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, formerly Mark Milley, for example. And you're saying their whole life has just been a journey to try to prevent peace instead of often risking their life in the interest of eventually furthering peace. So, by the way, of course, ah, oh, it's so annoying. Play the dang clip. I know, I'm sorry. Click the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Trying to get to 1 million subscribers by election day. Crazy goal, I know. That would be the fastest we'd jump from 900,000 to 1 million. But you've been doing amazing. Many of y'all who aren't subscribed, subscribing. And we're making quite the advance. So all those 10 people, including the former vice president, uh, Mike Pence, all of these people are have this horribly damaged worldview and they're all just going after Donald Trump because they want to send people into war? That's what. That's really your argument? Absolutely. It's not like these are Absolutely conservative. Absolutely, that's my These argument. are not conservative Jake, Republicans. These, people, these aren't conservative these Republicans people, who are Jake. concerned about Donald Trump. All of they're not. These, that's all not of right. These, all of these people, Jake, they came into office thinking that they could control Donald Trump. That when he said he wanted peace in the Mike world. Pence thought he could he, control Donald yes, Trump. Yes, he did. And when he found out. <laughs> really? <that> he, <laughs> Jake, it's too good. Yes, he Trump. did. And when he found out. <laughs> really? He, when he found out that he couldn't, they all turned on Donald Trump. <laughs> okay. What? <sighs> it's just, you know, J.D. Vance is going, Man, this, this is not going well for me. Leading to Jake Tapper not being able to hold in his laughter. Then in this moment, it doesn't get much better. Let's talk about things that he wants to do that are feeding into this concern that people like John Kelly and uh, General Mattis and uh, General um, uh, Milley have. He said on Friday, special counsel Jack Smith should get thrown out of the country. He's threatened to arrest election officials who cheated. We know that he believes a lot of people cheated that did not cheat. He yes, wants if to you put, violate the law, you should be arrested. Yes. Uh, no one disagrees with that, but he's talking Apparently about... Apparently you do, based on the no, way you're asking I'm the not, question. Ba no, based on the fact that he's accused people that didn't break the law of breaking the law when it comes to the election. And I'm, if you want to revisit that, I'm happy to. But Liz Cheney, he said, should be put before a war tribunal. None of that sounds fascist to, to you at all? No, of course it doesn't. Of Putting course it doesn't. Before a military tribunal? First of all, I don't buy into the premise of what you're saying, Jake. Because I just, said. On, on things that These I know he that he said. said, on things that I know that he said, you're imputing things, you're taking words out of context, you're taking two separate conversations and pretending no, that not. they were made at the exact same no, I'm time. Not. So I'm rejecting the premise of your question. I frankly don't believe what you're saying about Donald Trump's words. If you'd like to put up a clip and actually put him in context, I think the American people would realize that Donald Trump is a hell of a lot more reasonable than the people like Liz Cheney who would like to lie us into war. Now, Jake, we also have to remember, I mean, step back a little bit. 
Well, ask, ask yourself a basic question about network integrity. You guys talked about the Russia hoax nonstop. The FBI was investigating talked, it. The FBI talked, was investigating it, and we, so, we, so we recovered them. And so you took the words of unnamed FBI agents and put them on your net. No, and then we learned a bunch of really concerning things about the connections between the Trump campaign and the Russian government. We learned the Russian government's interference operations. And the one part you're talking about to justify the whole thing being a hoax is that some pundits, I don't even think CNN did this very often because they're normally, you know, they sort of center themselves a little bit more. But some pundits overstated what they thought would be discovered, speculated incorrectly, believing that a direct line between Trump himself talking to Putin saying, well, yeah, we're going to do this. But is that the only thing that would be concerning to you? What about all the indictments that came of the Mueller investigation? What about all the criminals that ended up being around Trump? No, no, Russia hoax, all Russia hoax, Russia, Russia, Russia. Okay, fine. We'll just leave that one there then, JD. Not super convincing. It's crazy to have Jake Tapper point to the fact that Trump retruthed a post about, among other people, putting Liz Cheney in front of a military tribunal. He's accused the January 6th select committee of treason, which all MAGA people love repeating the phrase, the punishment for treason is death. Wah. And you get asked about that and go, of course not, Jake. <laughs> CNN's at it again, quoting Trump. That's so deranged. I think that clip, too, really embodies why I've had people come to me and say, but uh, J.D. Vance, I think he might believe it now because he he says it so convincingly, right? He, he pretends like he, no, oh, all I think is that Trump wants to emphasize the patriotism of unity in success forward by going backwards. And that's a beautiful thing, Jake. He believes that, right? Are we, is there any way we're the crazy ones? Okay, that moment depicts it all. He can very confidently say the most absurd thing, which is, of course that's not fascist, after being asked about using the military against Trump's political opponent directly. Of course, you took him out of context. He meant like the fun kind, okay? He's gonna uh, do the fun trees, going after fun trees and, you know, Stuff. Thanks. What next question? Here's the next question. There were other people in the room, Mike Pence's former chief of staff, for example, who've explicitly said Donald Trump never said those things, right? So one on Mike the specific Pence, the guy comments, who's not going to support Trump because Mike, he, Mike Pence, Mike Pence's former chief of staff, uh, said that Donald Trump didn't say those things, right? So that's number one. Number two, I actually think there's a there's an interesting conversation here to have, Jake, which is why does John Kelly not support Donald Trump? It's about policy. It's no, actually no. not about personality. He says he agrees with Trump on most policy. No, he agrees with Trump on most well, policy. He disagrees with with Trump. On but, uh, how Trump views his role and his uh, and the fascism and the authoritarianism. I, I, don't, I don't buy that, Jake. I don't buy that because if you actually look at John Kelly, at folks like Liz Cheney, the fundamental disagreement they have with Donald Trump is even though they say that they're conservative, they're conservative in the sense that they want America to get involved in a ton of ridiculous military conflicts. They want America to police the world, and Donald Trump wasn't. John and Kelly lost a son policy, in Afghanistan. I, I, why are you saying that? He like I, I've never heard John Kelly say. Whether oh, Jake, he supports of Iran his, or his, Afghanistan. And, and, I, and I honor his son's sacrifice, and I honor his family's sacrifice. That doesn't mean he's not wrong about policy. Do people, what do what people specifically have, are you talking about? What has he said? That, is, is your argument that a person who lost a son in Afghanistan can't be wrong about public policy? I'm asking then you. Then why no. bring that up? Let's uh, talk about public policy. Because, because, because I've never criticized his service or I his son's I brought it up service. because you're acting as if he is pro-war, and I've never heard him say whether or not he supported the war in Afghanistan or the war in Iraq. He was a general carrying because orders. I know John Kelly's worldview. Oh, gosh. First of all, Trump picked him to be his chief of staff. No, but but he, he, he didn't know the last time, but he's going to do it great, great the next time. He's so bad at picking people, which his big line was, I'm an outsider, but I'm the best at picking people. So you could trust me to run the entire federal government. And now every single person who worked for him who comes out against him, you go, oh, no, to that guy's core. I saw it from a mile away. He just wants war. Oh, so why Trump pick him? 
Well, because of 40 chess or something. I I I don't want to be too provocative, but I do think Vance is disparaging the service of Kelly and his son by choosing to place Trump above all of it cuz that's what he's doing. What all of MAGA is choosing to do. They're all choosing. You're going to see Marco Rubio here in a second do the exact same thing. They're choosing to say I believe Trump over people who literally some of them spent their entire adult life risking their life or, or and and or serving this country in uniform and you pick the guy who got out of the draft because of bone spurs allegedly um who has time and time again disparaged our veterans who spent his whole life looking at this world and saying, world, what can you do for me? And who's on the record lying tens of thousands of times just when he was president. And you're saying the people who have no record, no record at all of lying. They must all be lying about Trump because they just want a bunch more people to die. Someone like John Kelly who understands what death in service means more than almost anyone. But they're all lying. Because Trump, the notorious liar, the person who Vance identified to be, Vance described as potentially America's Hitler, that guy must be the only one telling the truth. Because everyone else who worked with him and spoke out against him just wants a bunch of death. They're just, that's why they served their whole life. Just so one day they could get up to the top ranks of the government or the military or both and, and lie about Donald Trump. That was their whole life purpose so that more people could go die. So that Trump could stand at their graves and call them suckers. Here's Marco Rubio also defending. Come out and say these things. And my last point that I want to make about this is how interesting that these claims that were made this week pop up with a week and a half to go before the election. If you, in fact, believed, as some of these people claim, that Donald Trump is all these horrible things, Nazi, fascist, all these crazy terms they throw around, why didn't you stand up and walk out of that White House or that administration the moment you heard those terms? Why didn't you say that at the time and not wait till after the fact? Some of them did. <laughs> but I, I've heard this about the latest sexual um, the groping allegation against Trump excuse me a lot of people say why is it coming out now or in the case of this why are these people all of a sudden saying this they're not they're not Mark Milley as one of the examples that somewhat more recently was quoted saying something more harsh than he'd ever said in the past, even though he clearly indicated it before, had respect for our chain of command and for military norms, which say you don't leverage your public profile as a member of the military to speak out against political figures. It's a very strict rule. So when he was serving Trump, then saw the worst of it as Trump was on his way out. So obviously he's going to stay into the Biden administration. But when he did do his retirement ceremony, he did without directly addressing him, because that would be a huge violation of military norms, did reference the wannabe dictator, and all of you ignored it. Bah, who cares? <laughs> and then everyone else has been speaking out against Trump and saying stuff or stuff to this effect for so long, and you, you just plugged your ears. It's not our fault that you... Just unplug them so that you could then plug them again and scream liar. Oh, it's so nauseating. It's so gross. It's, it's interesting. Uh, who's he on with? This looks like Shannon Bream's show. Yeah. It's so interesting, Shannon, that uh, he'd just come out with this right before we're deciding if we're going <laughs> to make Trump the most valuable person in the world. Weird. Weird that they would warn us of what that could do. 
weird that they would bring something forward at the most relevant time on the most relevant subject for American voters to know about. So weird. Huh? Let me know what you thought in the comments. Support the show. Get the members only bonus show by clicking that join button below.